Hey everyone, Justin Martin, Team Day and Fitness. I wanted to make a quick video. I said it'll be quick, and that's my intent, so that's what we're gonna do. I wanna talk about um, my approach to training to failure, when I think it's applicable, when it isn't. When um, it is worth the risk, uh, if, you know, th there's times that the risk doesn't outweigh the reward. So uh, in those cases, I'm not gonna go to failure. Um, let, me, let me clarify a couple things. I know that in the science community, a lot of times it, it, uh, people talk about RIR, reps and reserve, or RPE, rate of perceived exertion. These are uh, pretty new terms over the past 10 or 15 years. Prior to that, we used to say, I'm, you know, I'm just going to stop a couple reps short of failure. And that's basically what that amounts to. Or you could say, I took that set to about 90%. Um, and 90% being, you know, I probably had one or two reps left, depending on the movement and that kind of thing. So as I'm talking through this, I'm going to be, I'll use, I like RPE, rate of perceived exertion. So on a scale of one to 10, if I was doing a 10, on the RPE scale, that would be to absolute momentary muscular failure on a movement in good form. Um, and so when I'm training, I mean, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm in my garage right now, let me show you around. So I'm in my garage, I do have, um, um, yeah, you can't see it from here. <laughs> You're going over this way. I hope I'm not making you guys seasick. But I've got a squat rack, right? And I've got a barbell. I've got dumbbells. I do have a leg press over there. And I've got a weight rack, a tree, a couple different bars. So most everything I do is free weight movement. I don't work out in a commercial gym, so I don't have access to a lot of machines, which would make it safer to go to failure. Um, I do still use failure. I use it primarily on isolation movements or smaller muscle groups that I'm not doing compound lifts on. So, um, but on my compound or multi-joint movements, your basic mass building movements with the bar, I generally stop uh, one or two reps short of failure. And that's for primarily for safety's sake. Um, if I'm squatting, I'll have a spot. Um, I don't want to have to dump the bar. For one, it's going to tear up my equipment. And two, I don't think going to that extreme uh, level of failure is necessary when I can move on to another movement uh, like uh, Bulgarian split squats and take it to failure safely without uh, you know, without having to compromise on, you know, tearing up equipment, dropping weight, or hurting myself. So I, I do think there's a time for, for failure training, and um, a lot of times we'll do that, like I said, on biceps, triceps, on side raises, uh, things like that. Um, but if I'm doing a chest press, if I'm doing a barbell row, um, I'm doing a, a squat variation, uh, it, it's really hard to take those things to absolute failure um, and, and, and not really necessary. Um, I, again, doesn't mean that, that you train so far off of effort that you're not stimulating any hypertrophy, but at the same time, if you really do know what uh, RPE of eight or nine looks like. And I've made a couple videos where I, I said, this is a RPE of around eight or nine. And you can, you should be able to tell by looking at the video that I'm actually working pretty darn hard uh, to get that, that last rep up. And it wasn't the absolute failure, but if I had to quantify it, I would say it was an RPE of nine or 90% effort on that particular movement on that set at that time. So um, it, it is so again, it's primarily a safety factor. If you don't have machines, it's a lot easier to go to failure on machines because 
I mean, you're, you're fixed in a position, all you have to do is let go of the handles, right? But if you're using free weights, bars and dumbbells, uh, it's a lot more challenging and there's a lot of chance of uh, the, the risk is gonna outweigh the rewards on that. So uh, failure is good, but you don't have to train to absolute muscular, momentary muscular failure to get a good, solid, hard workout. Um, you know, uh, decreasing your uh, time between sets, doing rest pause where you stop after nine, like the RPE of nine, rack the weight, wait a few seconds, knock out one or two on an extended set, or you go to nine, you rack the weight, you, you take off some weight and do a drop set. Those are all intensifiers that are gonna help you be able to work very hard but in a safer manner than taking a, a movement like squats or bench press to absolute failure when you don't have a spotter, right? That just doesn't make any sense. So anyway, I hope this information helps some of you guys. You know, in, in bodybuilding, we tend to want to, you know, quantify everything or, or round it down to absolutes. You're a high intensity trainer or you're a high volume trainer. Uh, and, and most people don't understand that somewhere in the middle is probably where most people need to be for their own bodies. It's going to make the most sense to, to grow. So you don't have to be a 20 or 30 set per body part trainer, or you don't have to be as low as a Dorian Yates, you know, doing one set per movement for two or three movements. Uh, to, to, to get good results either. You can probably find that middle ground and, and work really hard in that middle ground and make some really good progress. That's how you know if your training routine is effective. If you can sustainably make progress over time using it, if that's the case, then don't change anything. I mean, the, the whole thing about bodybuilding is to pro progress over time. And if you've got a routine that's allowing you to do that, continue doing that routine until you hit plateaus and then revisit and reassess what you can do differently to break past that plateau and keep going forward. Wow, I said this wasn't gonna be long here. We're almost eight minutes in. God bless you guys. I hope this information helps. Remember, training is great. It, there's so many things that it can do to help you. Uh, it, it, it gives you an outlet to release stress. It increases your libido and a, a lot of other things that uh, will work to your advantage. Take care. Uh, these have been a qu pretty quick succession. I've probably taken maybe at the most about a minute in between sets. This is my fourth and final set for bench. Um, since I don't have a spot, I'm not gonna go to failure, I mean, that would be stupid, right? So, but I'm gonna try to go between an eight and nine rate of perceived exertion. So I'm hoping that will give me somewhere between the 20, 10 and 12 rep range with this weight. Bear with me a minute. And that beans and rice and chicken. You know, you know. Don't need sound effects on this one. Yeah, with that pause on the 11th rep, I did turn it into probably a nine. <laughs> <laughs>